Caseville Fiber Top 10 Concerns Concern number three, is Caseville Fiber too risky? With any investment, there are risks, and this one is no different. With each decision you make from buying a house to driving to work, you have to weigh the risks against the probable outcomes and expected results. Acting strategically in the face of uncertainty is called risk management. A wise person will do what is in their power to minimize and control the chances of negative events and maximize the probability of opportunities. Trying to eliminate all chances of negative events is expensive and unwise, just as the person who does not drive to work for fear of being in an accident. Likewise, there are risks with Caseville Fiber. The biggest risk being that subscribership will drop below the healthy level of 35%. To better understand these risks, let's ponder a few possible outcomes. First, let's consider the highly unlikely worst possible scenario. The city moves forward with Caseville Fiber and not one person signs up. With interest, the cost to the city would be approximately $30 million or $1 million per year for 30 years. That would be a burdensome event and would amount to 6.5% of 2020 yearly revenues. However, this is incredibly unlikely since over 31% of the city tried to sign up for Caseville Fiber last year. So with this in mind, let's take the also unlikely but more possible chance that not a single additional home signs up for Caseville Fiber above the 31.6 who signed up last year. In this scenario, with 90% of required subscribership, the city would have a total cost of $3 million over 30 years, which is $100,000 per year and 0.65% of 2020 yearly revenues. That's less than 1%. The city would pay this using sales and franchise taxes. Though that is a lot of money, it is about $3 per person per year. Now let's consider the equally probable outcome that subscribership is significantly more than the required 35% and that businesses, schools, churches, and other organizations also sign up. In this scenario, the city would have delivered blazing fast internet available to all of its residents at no cost to the city, while at the same time lowering residents' monthly bills. The 30-year bond would also be paid off much sooner. This represents very good outcomes that have been achieved by other cities. What actually will happen is probably somewhere in the middle, where there is still blazing fast internet available to everyone at lower costs and at no cost to the city. Kaysville City has done their homework, and they have taken steps to maximize the chances of a successful outcome, including letting Fiber go to a vote, learning from other cities' successes and failures, and working with experts in the fiber industry. They have been studying all options and alternatives for two years. This is a very informed, very intentional effort. And I expect that just like driving to work, the rewards will be worth the venture. Please vote yes to Kaysville Fiber.